I sit on one side of a barn, leaning up against a wooden post. After limping across the open countryside for miles, I need to catch my breath. I don't have the energy to deal with, with that. The young girl stays where she is, staring at me. Why couldn't this place be abandoned? All I wanted was some rest from the rain. Those caramel eye rises lock onto me, barely shifting as she takes in the side. What? She doesn't respond. What is it? No reply. Maybe I spoke her a little before. Anyway, it's best to ignore her for now. This shadow will do for a night, regardless of a girl. Tomorrow is less certain. Where do I go from here? I need to come up with a plan of some kind. Perhaps I can find a way so over the hills and towards the settlement. Although I want to avoid any of the main roads and forts, dressed as I am. What else? What else? Of course, there will be provisions. I need to gather supplies depending on how long my journey is going to be. If I want to get away from this war, I'll have to aim for a southern state. Traveling such a distance won't be cheap. In which case, I'll need to find some work in order to afford the calling. Either that or raid the supplies from a general store and run. <sighs> Maybe even trade with one or two traps so I can make it to Indian lands. Perhaps a kind chief will take pity on me and give me free shelter. Well, I did just find myself a potential for gaining ship. Looking across at the child, it seems she's playing with some kind of letter pouch? Hey, wait a minute. I take my hip and find my cartridge box is missing. You little thought, that's mine. Just when did she steal that? Ignore my petrol tones, the girl pulls out a paper cartridge and fiddles with it. Hey, leave that be! As I struggle to my feet, she rips open the packet. A cloud of gunpowder is thrown up into the native's face. It starts a coughing fit as she's taken by surprise. She drops the cartridge box, which lands on the ground with a clatter. Eventually, the air clears and the girl is covered in a sooty mess. Damn it! That's why I told you to leave it alone! I snatch the ring crash and pick up the animation of the ground. <laughs> the two groans, blinking rapidly to keep the powder out of her eyes. What's wrong with her? Does she, doesn't she know what camp powder is? The girl presses her dress with her hand trying to get the stuff off. A black dust slowly floats up she wipes off the suit. It makes the young brat sneeze. You'll never get it off like that. She stops and stares at me. Bending now I point the bottle on the floor nearby. Clean yourself with the rainwater. It will get most of the powder off. Keep me where I stop her from catching fire, too. That is, in the event she comes into contact with any sparks. After a few cautious glances, she dips her hands into the bottle. The girl slowly washes her face with the muddy water. Eventually, the black suit disappears and is replaced by a somewhat clean complexion. Now, Stand there quietly and don't touch my things. I bray her, but as far as I can tell, she doesn't understand the word I'm saying. <sighs> Grabbing my cartridge box, I sum back down the patch of hay. I examine the paper and find the musket bar still hidden inside. But without the gunpowder, the cartridge is essentially useless now. Still. Never know when some extra wordy may come in handy. I replace both items inside my box which I attach to my belt. Turning forward I find the girl staring at me again. 
Those caramel eyes hang on my every movement. Thinking about it, I should probably watch myself around this breath. I didn't notice her stole my ammunition. Who knows what else she might try and pull? If I'm not careful, she might go for my bayonet or something. Keeping one eye on the child, I try to make myself comfortable. As I sit up, I feel a tinge of pain again. The wound's already acting up. Carefully lowering the collar of my jacket, I check the bullet hole in my arm. The wound isn't infected yet, but unless I can get to it in a store or a tavern soon, well, let's say hiding in the rain and sleeping in the mud won't do me any favors. Reaching to my jacket pocket, I pull out my canteen. Find a lot of room rations. I definitely need to get to a tavern. I pull off the top and take a swig. Then I pour some alcohol into my open palm and hold it on my upper arm. Slowly, rum trickles down and sips into the wound. The boo stings as I clean out the blood hole, the blood mixing with it and running off. Ugh. Making gentle rubbing gestures, I can't tell if I'm making things better or worse. But the alcohol helps in any case. As I heave a sigh and take another drink from the canteen, I find the girl is still watching. What? Never seen an Englishman bleeding out before? She doesn't say anything. Hey, I don't wanna speak English, huh? Nothing. Well, that's fine by me. I don't fancy talking with a native brat over deer or face paint. If I'm going to die here, I might as well do it in peace with some round to hand. 